Antonio. We are live from Northeast Stadium. The 1983 High School Football City Championship showdown between the Judson Rockets and the Churchill Chargers. Coming your way exclusively on KSAT TV 12. Hi again, everybody. Joe Fowler with you, along with Greg Simmons. It is an interesting night, a great night for football, only a fair night weather-wise. We have a light fog in the air. It has been damp and misty throughout the day. You are looking at one of the many breakthrough banners that they apply and build throughout the week here at Churchill and at Judson. But once again, the weather conditions, they will play a factor in terms of yardage and in terms of a running game. The field is a little bit moist. The air is a little bit moist. It is heavy, but it didn't rain that much. And right now, the actual condition of the field is not bad. It will deteriorate, deteriorates rather, somewhat throughout the evening. But instead of me telling you what might happen tonight, here's what our own Jim Dawson says about tonight's weather. All right, Joe and Greg and all of you out there, we're watching heavy showers move up. Show it to you on radar because the uh, line of activity you see here has been working up very slowly, but it's just about stalled out. You are right there in greater San Antonio, so you might escape the activity, but the showers are there and they've been riding pretty steadily for the past uh, two or three hours. For the next maybe two or three hours, I think you're in the ball game and uh, cloudy is still the story. Off and on light drizzles and fog, but not too bad. So hang on and stay covered. There you see the Churchill Chargers gathering on their sideline. They have just broken through their breakthrough banner. Churchill, they have won seven city titles in the last 10 years. They are used to going to city championship games. They are used to going to semifinal and quarterfinal games. They are a team that is poised. They are also a team that struggled through the season very early. They had three losses before they knew it. They finished through last week with a record of eight and three and two. The Jetson Rockets now moving to their sidelines with their head coach, Frank Arnold, followed by their cheerleaders doing their flips and getting ready. Judson elects to race all the way downfield to run before their fans and let them bask in the glory of what an incredible year that they have had. The Judson Rockets, they have only lost one ball game, that to the Roosevelt Rough Riders this year. Now they gather around their head coach, Frank Arnold. Coach Arnold, tremendous record considering the fact that he has rebuilt programs at MacArthur and at Judson. 98 wins and 42 losses with two ties. This is his fourth year at Judson High School. So both teams on their field gathered around their coaches. Our referees for tonight's games are a bunch of veterans. The head referee is Red Shaw. The umpire is Dick Hood. Our headlinesman is Joe Keith. The field judge, Herb Lakeley. And the back judge is Tim Potter. There are their names. I don't know if they'd want me telling you, but they got about 90 years experience <laughs> among them. They've been around, but they only, <laughs> they only picked the best for a game like this. Again, the stands are packed, everybody. They are genuinely packed. I still see some people coming into the stadium. I still see some cars out on Starcrest, but they are gonna miss the kickoff. We hope you're with us right now on KSAT TV 12 because we are ready to bring you the kickoff of not only the city championship, the city championship game, but also a quarterfinal game and a berth to the semifinals in state. What makes this unique, very unique, is the fact that Judson and Churchill in the quarterfinals tonight are from the same district. And that, my friends, is a testimony to the fact that this district, 275A, is a tough district. Churchill Chargers won the toss, but they elected to kick off. They will be on our right, defending the right or south goal. And now, calling the play-by-play, -play, my colleague and a guy that you've heard for the last nine years or so calling high school sports play-by-play, -play, my friend Greg Simmons. Thank you very much, Joe Fowler. Carlton Spinks has set the kickoff for the Churchill Chargers. Back deep for the Judson Rockets, Chris Byer, Chip Lambert, and A.J. Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, the state by the quarterfinals is underway. Swift kick. It's picked up and fielded at the 30-yard line. Finally, but then there's a fumble early in the game, but no, it's recovered luckily by Judson at the 45-yard line. Tense moments already. Sid Scott got in there and recovered it for the Judson Rockets, and that sets them up in good field position. Even though they had a mistake, it'll be first and...
first and 10 from the 45. Alan Deere, Scott, and Lambert, Martin will be the offensive back for it. Kennard and Westendorf the ends. And the front line, Strader, Lyons, Galvan, Cook, and Bazzani. Here's a snap. The give goes to the first man through. That'll be Fire. Fire battles his way to the 47-yard line. A gain of three. Chris Pryor last week, 225 yards for Chris Pryor last week in their game against Dallas. He will carry the ball some 25 to 30 times tonight. There's your defense. Here's your defensive line. It'll be Stewart, Galindo, Hefron, and Barrientos. Also, Zuniga Munford in the linebacking squad. And in the backfield will be Smith, Martin, Eichler, and the rest of the crew for the Churchill Chargers. Here we go. Second down and five from the 50. The give goes to the first man through again. It's Chris Fire. And Fire close to a first down, battling his way down to the Churchill Charger 47-yard line. He's brought down by linebacker Albert Zuniga. We're going to see a lot of action from Chris Fire tonight. Oh, and one other note, everybody. Uh, Chris Fire needs just 97 yards to tie Pat Sheehan of the 1965 Lee High School team to tie him for the all-time city rushing record. Chris Pryor, just 97 away. Third and two as the Judson Rockets break out of the huddle. Man in motion to the right. Here's a pitch out. He goes once again to Fire, and Fire goes booming through, first down, and then some for the Judson Rockets down to the 39-yard line. Chris Eichler was there, the roving linebacker for the Churchill Chargers. Once again, every play so far to Chris Pryor. That time he made his own hole. He was on the right side, but elected to go around end instead of going through the hole on the end. And he gained another three yards on his own. First, first down the ball game that sets up the Judson Rockets with the first and 10 from the 39 yard line of the Churchill Chargers, threatening early in the ball game, just in the way, 10.37 to play. Lone back, that is Pryor. And Pryor gets to give again as he gets around the left end. He's got running room, picks up some great blocks down to the 25 yard line before he's run out of bounds. Another big gainer for Chris Pryor. And folks, what really is amazing me is that they're going, it doesn't really amaze me, but they are going to Chris Pryor on every single play. Alan Deere can throw the ball, but if Chris Pryor is going to gain you 10 yards a pop, why not stick with it? First down and 10 at the Churchill Charger 27-yard line. Already the Rockets are threatening, and oddly enough, they're threatening with a wet field. Chris Pryor's traction is great early in this ball game. They come out split to the white right and to the left. They have a slight right lone setback. Here's a give again. It will go to Pryor and Pryor burst off tackle. Still on his feet. Down to the 20, the 15, the 10. Stumbles and down to the 5. Chris Eicher was there to make the saving tackle before Pryor was able to worm his way into the end zone. The market at the 6-yard line. I'll tell you what, Greg. That, that shot from the field will show you that a replay because it shows just how much Pryor was able to do on his own. He was hit several times. Watch. He's hit once. He shakes it. Hit twice. He shakes it again. Who's blocking for him? He's grabbed again. Gets away stumbles a bit and finally falls Chris Pryor making a lot of yardage on his own and again every play has been to Chris Pryor first and goal from the five yard line for the Judson Rockets and once again it'll be Pryor the lone setback slot right man in motion to the left the give again goes to Pryor and he's nailed before he gets to the line of scrimmage but he's able to fall forward and pick up some yardage he's brought down in part by Daryl Stewart and Tom Hepron an added dimension that we are going to offer to you tonight is John Kirby, who will be on the sidelines watching the plays, especially in a situation like this. John Kirby will be our man on the sidelines, and like I say, especially in a situation when they are down near the end zone. He can analyze for us. We've got him in a minute. Second and goal inside the five. They mark it at the four yard. Flip back. Here's a pitch out. It goes to fire again. Fire has some blocks, but he's in trouble. Bursting through. Touchdown, Jetson. for the Judson Rockets to move smartly downfield. Every play going to Chris Pryor, and now they are going to attempt the extra point. John Tomasi, a transfer student to Judson High School, will be going for this. Tomasi will attempt the extra point. Six-nothing Judson. He'll do it from the 10-yard line. Here's a snap. Good snap. Nice high kick, but we have...